good morning guys again I'm using my webcam instead of the regular um, video because I am pretty much too sick to set anything else up so I apologize because I know it's going to be grainy and you're probably going to have to turn your volume the whole way up to be able to hear me which is why I don't like using the webcam very much but today I'm sick and I don't really feel like setting up everything that I need to use the other camera so I apologize I am wearing my Totoro Kigurumi which I finally got yesterday after waiting about two weeks for it it is super soft really comfortable and it actually has like pockets and everything like exactly what I want from a Kigurumi so yeah it's really comfortable so today we will be talking about Pandora Hearts, or at least the first season of Pandora Hearts. Crossing fingers for a second season. And the majority of this is going to have some spoilery stuff in it, but not a ton. So I am going to be giving away kind of a big spoiler, but um, if you don't mind that, you can continue to, to uh, listen on. So. What is Pandora Hearts about? The basic story of Pandora Hearts is it focuses around a noble and heir to the Bizarius line named Oz. Now there are several ways to say his last name. In the particular translation that I have, because it's only English subbed, it's not got any type of dub at all. It's called Bizarius, but there's Bizarius as well, and Vizar Vizarlorist or something. It's there's several ways to pronounce this, but because I know it as Bizarius, I'm gonna be saying Bizarius. All right. So he's turning 15 whenever the show starts, and he has to participate in like a coming of age ceremony for becoming a man in his particular line. He's very close with his little sister Ada and his servant and best friend Gil. Gil collapsed outside the Bizarius house about five years ago, and he has no memory of who he is or anything, but he was brought in to be a servant for Oz, and does so with a lot of happiness. So, whenever they are actually doing the ceremony, something goes wrong. A bunch of cloaked figures jump in, and they basically throw Oz into something called the Abyss. There, he meets Alice, who is a chain, which... A chain seems to be like either a monster or a humanoid that, you know, you can make a contract with to have them, like, fight by your side. An illegal contract makes it so that um, they will quite slowly drain the life force from you and you'll get, like, a symbol right here. And it'll be, like, a little clock ticking and each, you know, piece of the clock ticking is, you know, your life ticking away. And it's a legal contract, which you won't hear about probably for another episode or two is done by having the contract done through blood through a mirror so that way if you want to end the contract all you have to do is smash the mirror it doesn't affect your life force doesn't do anything that's why illegal contracts are so frowned upon because it's taking your life force away and there's nothing that can be done about it so he meets Alice and she wants a contract with him and you know he's not really okay with that at first but eventually he does agree and you know she's able to help him escape the abyss now an interesting thing to note about the abyss is that time passes differently it passes really weirdly they feel like they've been in there maybe a couple minutes to an hour not not long and when they come out of the abyss it's been 10 years so that's extremely awkward for Oz who has not aged a day When he comes out of the abyss, he comes across, sorry, that was my phone. He comes across um, Sharon, Brake, and an older guy named Raven, and they are part of the Pandora organization, and they basically want him and Alice to join Pandora and help them investigate a lot of things that deal with the abyss. And that's basically where the story goes around. It centers around them uncovering facts about the Abyss, them uncovering facts about Alice and each other, 
and that's how it proceeds. Now, the characters. Oz is the main character. He's blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and he resembles his ancestor, Jack, very, very much. He has a strong heart, and he's determined to help Alice find her memories and uncover mysteries that seem to be happening with the Abyss. You'll learn more and more about him as to why he's become the way that he's been throughout the story, but I don't want to spoil anything. Alice is a young girl with no memories. She became a, she doesn't know why she became a chain. She doesn't know how she got into the abyss because she's searching for her lost memories and she knows that she was human. But she can't remember what happened to get her to become this bee rabbit, black rabbit. Apparently she's one of the more powerful chains in the abyss, but again, she doesn't know why or how that happened. But she does have a strong urge to protect Oz and cares a lot for him. The next character is Raven slash Gil. Now this is the spoiler I was telling you about. You don't know that Raven is Gil when you first happen upon uh, Raven. I mean, a couple people could put two and two together. In fact, a lot of people that I watched the show with put it together before I did. But yes, they are the same person. Gil slash Raven is Oz's servant, and he's become grown up to become an heir to the Night Ray Clan. Now the Night Ray Clan is basically the complete enemy of the Bizarrous Clan, like where the Night Rays would considered light, or the Night Rays would considered dark, Bizarrous would be considered light, like Bizarrous do everything out in the open where Night Rays are very secretive. And they do a lot of kind of shady stuff. But um, the reason Gil became a part of that household is because he was told if he could get the chain that that family has called Raven, he could get into the abyss to help Oz. So, of course, he jumped at the chance to do that. Um, also, Gil's um, biological brother was part of the Night Ray clan, and he, you know, was reunited with him. Who He apparently has all of his memories, whereas Gil has none of the memories of what happened. So you'll learn about that as, uh, as the show goes on, too. He's also a little ashamed to tell uh, Oz about a lot of things that have happened in his past, but again, as you progress with the story, you'll learn pretty much everything. The next is Xerxes Break. He's kind of a strange, happy guy. He does a lot of really weird stuff, like he'll have trapdoors that lead under tables and out of cupboards, like, and he'll take those to go through places instead of actually, you know, coming through like the front door. He often is seen eating a lot of sweets, and he'll steal sweets from other people. Um, he's actually got one of the more powerful chains, and it's a legal contract, and it's Mad Hatter. And you'll notice that some of the more powerful chains are actually all Alice in Wonderland themed type characters, and that was what actually drew me to the series. Like when I heard about Alice and heard about all these Alice in Wonderland themed things, it um it kind of brought me into it because I love that type of stuff. But anyways. He is the one that, of course, orchestrated most of this. He, he's the one that convinced Ra Raven slash Gil to go to the Night Rays. He's actually working for him as well. Like, he's not, like, seriously joining them or doing any of the shady things for them. He's doing it basically to send information to Break. So, I don't know if you could really say that he's bad, but... Um, Break, you find out, has a completely different name and a completely different past. He had an illegal contract before, and he was working for a completely different family before, but again, I'm not going to spoil all of that either. Like, you'll learn more about the family and his old chain and all of that if you watch the show. And the last main character is Sharon. You met Sharon before when, he, when she was um, actually coming to Oz's coming-of-age ceremony. And since then, she has not aged. She's 14. Well, she said she was 14 then. She's clearly 24 now, but she has not aged at all. She carries Equus, which is like a black unicorn, and that's her chain. And her household is one of the four main households as well. It is... Sorry, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, yawn. 
sorry, hers is Rainsworth, and um, the four main households each have a door to the abyss, and there's a fifth door to the abyss from where a other household was part of this before the Bizarius was. The um, Baskervilles were the main clan rather than the Bizarius, but that's part of an incident that happened a long time ago, and you'll learn more about that again as you watch the show. But yeah, her, her family holds one of the doors to the abyss, and she's, you know, the heir to that. So those are the five, those are the main characters, and there are a bunch of other characters that are pretty important to the series, but it would literally take me probably a half an hour just naming off every single character, so get to know them as you proceed, I suppose. As far as the art goes, again, you know me, I end up choosing a lot of anime based on the art because I think that a lot of the art is beautiful. This is no exception. It's beautiful art. There's no shortcuts. There's nothing that I see that looks off at all. And the costumes and the characters, they add to like the characters' personalities. Like the, the costumes really fit each character. And it's very interesting how each of those costumes are so representative of the characters. Because you see Gil, who's dressed all in black, and, you know, it kind of kind of represents his attachment to the Night Rays, plus his dark past. And a lot of the rest of them are dressed, you know, in noble attire, because each of them have some kind of noble connection. So, it, it's, it's interesting. Each, each costume represents each character very well. Now, as far as the character depth and the character, like, the story development, for me, the story starts off very slow. Like, I, when I first started the series, I had no idea what it was about or anything. I just liked the art and liked the Alice in Wonderland theme. I was expecting something totally different. And, to be honest, the very first episode, while I enjoy it very much now, it was super boring to me. And I asked other people, I was like, how do you, how do you feel about it? And they were like, they all admitted to me that they thought that the first episode was really slow. But you learn after you've watched the series that it's a build-up to the rest of the series. So while it starts off slow, don't give up because it's definitely a great series. After the first episode, you meet a lot of the characters. that You get to have a great mix of action with a lot of fighting with Alice, um, storytelling, and then flashbacks. And the storytelling and the flashbacks will teach you a lot about each character and the characters have a lot of relatability once you start to get to know about how a lot of them work then you know you'll understand why they do the things the way that they do the why their personalities are the way that they are you know you'll really get to understand them they they aren't just one-dimensional characters they seem that way starting off but they seem there seems like there's going to be some off thing about them but really once you get through all of the episodes and you hear about their backstories and what makes them what they are you see how much depth there, depth there is to each character I'm sorry that I'm having such a hard time pronouncing things right now it's because I'm sick like it's not gonna get any better I actually kind of considered not doing a review this week but I was like no just do it it's gonna be fine so I apologize that I'm derping up my words I'm trying to enunciate best I can with my nose doing the thing. So yeah, the point is, the series helps you understand the story, why each character is related to one another, why they do what they do, and just a lot of other things. I, I can't, I don't want to spoil anything, so... So if I start going on a tangent, I'm gonna spoil things. I don't want that. That's not the goal of this. The goal of this is to get you interested and to watch it. All right. So my only complaint is that while the story ends kind of like it ends on a reasonably good note, but you can tell that there really should be more to the story, and the manga does continue. I've heard rumors that they just couldn't secure funding for a second season, so they left it there. But really, it's such a good series. It really does need a second season. It's A lot of people are just going, Oh, I hope there's a second season. I hope there's a second season. Because really, like, while it ends okay, it doesn't end on a way that is going to, you know, 
explain anything. Like, you, there's a lot explained, but it doesn't... It doesn't end on a way that would completely make everything feel final and whole. So, that's why I'm actually giving this show a 9 out of 10. Rather than a 10 out of 10, it would get a 10 out of 10 if it had been completely finished. But it ends abruptly, and there really should be a second season. And crossing my fingers for a second season. Now, if I get the chance to review the manga, I'll let you guys know how that goes. But... For now, I've only watched the subbed version, and as far as I know, there is no dubbed version yet, so. Either way, it to me, it's a really great series. It's worth watching. I would watch it again and again. Like, there's some anime that I watch once and I'm like, I won't watch this again. But Pandora Hearts is one that I would watch over and over and over again. I love the characters. I love the story. I love the action. It's all very, very interesting, so... I hope you take the time to give it a watch, and let me know what you think of it whenever you get to watch it. Alright, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye!